Howdy gang, it's Devin here from the Couch Warmers. And today we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite anime of all time, an underrated gem, Gungrave. Now I know what you're thinking. Dev, why are you doing a video on such an old anime? Well my friends, Gungrave deserves to be rediscovered by a new generation of anime fans. So sit back, grab a snack, and let's dive into the world of guns, gangsters, and friendship. The story of Gungrave follows two childhood friends, Brandon Heat and Harry McDowell, as they work their way through the ranks of the Millennium Crime Syndicate. Primarily through the eyes of Brandon do we see the rise and eventual downfall of this beautiful tragedy. Split between a dystopian future and a noir gangster era, the knowledge of what's to come only further pulls you into the intrigue of how and why things turned out the way they did. Now one of the first things that's going to hate you about Gungrave is its unique art style. The character designs are a mix of realism and over-the-top stylization. It gives the anime an incredibly distinct look. It's like the love child of a John Woo film and a Tim Burton movie. And the animation, my god the animation, is just top notch. Especially when you pair it with the incredibly well choreographed fight scenes. Their ability to convey an inertia in combat is what makes everything feel so weighty and only further serves to add to the atmosphere and the drama of the series. And while that is all top notch, I don't want you to think that Gungrave is just about the action. It also has a very deep and really emotional story. The friendship between Brandon and Harry is one of the core elements of this anime. It's a bond that gets tested time and time again as these two friends rise through the ranks of Millennium. It's like a buddy cop movie, except they're both the bad guy. And while they share the same path, they take very different approaches, with Harry largely being the brains and Brandon the muscle. And when things begin to take a dark turn, it's this friendship that keeps the anime grounded in reality. The story of Gungrave follows two childhood friends, Brandon Heat and Harry McDowell, as they work their way through the ranks of the Millennium Crime Syndicate. Primarily through the eyes of Brandon do we see the rise and eventual downfall of this beautiful tragedy. Split between a dystopian future and a noir gangster era, the knowledge of what's to come only further pulls you into the intrigue of how and why things turned out the way they did. Brandon Heat. He's a calm, loyal, thoughtful, and generally quiet individual. And while he is sparse with his words, he's far from your usual emotionless, blank slate of a protagonist. But rather, his use of body language, facial expression, and limited words, you get a deeper understanding of what drives this character and what his primary motivations are. He grew up in the slums alongside of his friends, so Brandon's expectations for life have had a low bar from the beginning. And sadly, when Maria's uncle tries to give him a job to get him on the straight and narrow and no longer the life of a street tough, this isn't an option Brandon ever truly felt he could take. His strong sense of loyalty and personal desire not to leave his friends behind are what both make him simultaneously a lovable character as well as his tragic weakness. Pushed further and further into the depths of crime by Harry's aspirations and motivated by the desire to protect Maria and later her daughter Mika, this sadly feels like the path Brandon's life would always lead to. Harry McDowell. Coming from the same slums as Brandon and being lifelong friends, it's very clear to see how this upbringing has affected them both. While Brandon has become a very soft-spoken but loyal individual, Harry has become a brash, loud, but altogether very charismatic leader. His aspirations to reach the top by any means necessary will lead to some of his darker tendencies that are visible from the very beginning. And while Harry tends to think with his head versus Brandon who thinks with his heart, it's clear from the beginning that they are in a symbiotic relationship where Harry is the brains and Brandon's the muscle. It's very tragic to see that this character's aspirations kind of get ahead of him in every way possible. This is shown mostly when thinking about the fate of his and Brandon's friendship. A lone tear can be seen, and that is very emblematic, I think, of the person that was lost on the road to ambition. While drastically less sympathetic, he's still a tragic figure in his own right. Maria and her daughter Mika Maria starts the story primarily as a catalyst for things that are to come, and a very sad example of what can happen when you have very little control over your own life. 
Though at one point her and Brandon did share mutual feelings, and she even confessed to him, this is sadly something Brandon himself would ultimately turn down due to his own increasing sense of guilt for his work as a sweeper. Maria will go on to marry the leader of the Millennium Crime Syndicate, Big Daddy, and have a daughter named Mika. Her and her daughter live in relative peace for about 13 years before tragedy takes place. And that is sadly at which point the catalyst role will shift from mother to daughter. Mika has a very similar disposition to her mother, but is a much more stable early environment. Once her mother is lost, sadly, she is spurned to find Brandon and get revenge on the person that ruined her life. Due to her very similar disposition and upbringing, she often reminds Brandon of both his past and his continued motivation to protect this child, as this is the way. So I fired again, and I missed, and then I missed again, and, and again. then I fired again, <laughs> and then I missed, and then I fired, and then I fired, and I missed. I missed both times, and then I fired, and I missed. This went on for several hours, and then I fired, and then I missed. <laughs> And then I was out of bullets, and then I got sad, yeah. I had a popsicle, and then I passed out in the snow. And then I woke up, and then I reloaded, and then I fired, and then I missed. I missed again. I fired. I hit something, but it wasn't what I was going for, so I guess I missed. I passed out again. I had another popsicle. I had a dream that I was fired at something. I missed. And so, that's it. This has been my video on Gun Grave. I really hope it get, convinced you to give this anime a chance. It's a hidden gem that deserves so much more love and attention. If you have thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay happy and healthy. Bye!